LWO on WeatherNet. Uh, liftoff conditions have been pretty good. ATS is ready for launch. Ignition. Liftoff. Falcon 9 has cleared the tower. Nine, eight. Side booster ignition. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Good afternoon. It's Wednesday, June 30th, and we're here at SpaceX's headquarters in Hawthorne, California. You're looking at a live view of Falcon 9 as it awaits its 3.31 p.m. Eastern Time launch from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. My name is Andy Tran. I'm a production supervisor here at SpaceX. Welcome to the webcast for SpaceX's Transporter 2 mission. It's our second dedicated SmallSat rideshare program launch and second launch, uh, our 20th launch of 2021. For those of you who just who joined us yesterday, you know that we got all the way down to T minus 11 seconds, but had to stand down from our launch attempt due to rotary aircraft entering the keep out zone. We are expecting the airways to stay clear today and looking forward to having Falcon 9 deliver the 85 spacecraft and three Starlink satellites on board to orbit. Now this includes CubeSats, microsats, and orbital transfer vehicles, sometimes called space tugs, which would deploy their spacecraft after separating from Falcon 9. Today's launch is SpaceX's second polar orbit launch from the East Coast and only the second polar trajectory since the late 1960s flown out of Cape Canaveral. A polar orbit is one in which satellites pass above the North and South Poles as opposed to the equator. SpaceX has worked closely with the Air Force and the FAA to create a trajectory that meets the necessary safety requirements for flight. So far, everything's looking like a great day for a rocket launch at the Cape. Uh, and with liftoff in just under 10 minutes, let's take a closer look at Falcon 9. The two-stage vehicle is standing about 229 feet tall, or slightly taller than a 21-story building. It's named after the Millennium Falcon from, the Star, from Star Wars, and the number nine indicates the number of Merlin 1D engines on the first stage. Today's mission is the eighth flight for this particular booster. That bottom two-thirds of the vehicle is the first stage, its objective is to accelerate the vehicle through the Earth's atmosphere to space and then separate from the rest of the rocket. From there, it will make its way back to Earth and target a landing on land this afternoon on landing zone one, which is the pad that you see on screen right now. And if you're an Eastern Florida resident, you might even be able to see Falcon 9 over the ocean and, or also hear one or more of the sonic booms as Falcon 9 makes its way back to land. On top of the first stage is the black carbon fiber interstage. It connects the two stages and houses the, the pneumatic pushers that allow the first and second stage to separate during flight. And then on top of the interstage is the Falcon 9 second stage, which takes the payload to its eventual destination in orbit. After the first stage separates about two and a half minutes into flight, the second stage will then carry the 88 spacecraft to orbit. Similar to the first transporter mission, we'll be flying a fuel dome payload tray, which is essentially a small platform mounted on the back end of the second stage fuel dome that will release a handful of spacecraft today. This is worth mentioning as we expect this tray to obstruct one of our two MVAC views during flight. At the top of the rocket, you'll notice a large nose cone. This is called the fairing. Encapsulated inside the fairing are all, are all 88 satellites protecting them until the vehicle is outside of the Earth's atmosphere, at which point the fairing separates to expose the satellites to space. For today's mission, our fairing is making its third flight, and we're also going to be attempting to recover the fairing halves from the water following landing with our chartered recovery vessel, HOS Briarwood. The chief engineer held a technical poll at T minus 60 minutes, and the launch director held a propellant load and launch go no go poll at T minus 38 minutes. Since the T minus 35 minute mark, Falcon 9 has been loading propellants. Uh, the vehicle is a bi-propellant vehicle, which means it uses two types of propellants. For fuel, a refined form of kerosene called RP1, and for oxidizer, super chill liquid oxygen, we also refer to that as LOX. Currently, RP1 is fully loaded on the second stage and almost fully loaded on the first stage. Liquid oxygen loading is currently underway. We're also loading helium into storage vessels on the first and second stages. 
we take cold helium and run it through heat exchangers on the Merlin engines. And this hot helium is used to fill the empty volume in the tanks created by the engine pumps pulling propellant out of the stage. A few seconds ago, engine chill began. Uh, began. This is where we opened the pre-valves between the first stage prop tanks and the nine Merlin engines. This allows a little bit of cold liquid oxygen to flow into the turbo pumps, bringing them down to a temperature close to that of the super chill propellant that will soon be flowing through the engines at liftoff. We're at T minus six minutes and 30 seconds in counting. The vehicle is healthy. We're tracking no issues so far. The range is standing by to support and the weather is green for today's liftoff. All systems continue to be go for an on-time liftoff at 3.31 p.m. Eastern Stage Time. Stage 1, RP1 load is complete. Today's launch will mark SpaceX's 20th mission of the year and the 127th mission to date. Of the nine missions flown so far this year, 18 were on reuse booster and will be the eighth flight for this booster flying on today's mission. Now, if you look at all of the Falcon 9 missions SpaceX has flown to date, half have been flown on flight-proven boosters. Reusability allows SpaceX to fly the most expensive parts of the rocket, which in turn drives down the cost of space access. It also allows us to increase our launch cadence and provide more flight opportunities for our customers like those on board today's mission. In fact, last year, we launched more than any other launch provider in the world. If you've been keeping track, you know our first transporter mission launched a record-breaking 143 spacecraft. And while there are fewer customer spacecrafts on board today's compared to Transporter 1, we're actually launching more mass to orbit on this mission than the previous one. SpaceX is targeting three dedicated rideshare flights to sun-synchronous orbits per year. And we also offer opportunities for a ride to orbit on our Starlink missions, which launch every couple of weeks. Small satellites can ride to space on SpaceX's Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, as well as Starship in the not-too-distant future. We are under five minutes from liftoff. Falcon 9 is now moving into the final stages of the countdown. In a few moments here, the strong back will begin to open up its clamp arms. And once open, it will begin to retract away from the rocket to its pre-launch position, about two degrees away from the vehicle. And as Falcon 9 lifts off, hydraulic arms will continue to pull the strong back further away uh, to provide clearance for liftoff. So there was the call out for the clamp arms to start opening up. They are situated right at the bottom of the fairing there. The strong back is part of the transporter erector, also called the TE. The TE's job is to roll Falcon, Falcon 9 out to the launch pad, raise it to a vertical launch position, also route power, fluids, and communication to both the rocket and satellite. The TE has a launch mount that the first stage is clamped to, and the strong back that is hinged to that launch mount. And you can start to hear the hiss and pop of pressure venting from the rocket and the plumbing in the transporter erector. At this stage, the strong back should be reclined to its pre-launch position, again, two degrees away from the vehicle. We are just over three minutes until liftoff. The vehicle remains in good health. The first and second stages are almost fully fueled. Gaseous oxygen is also venting from the base of Falcon 9. That is the chillin' of the Merlin turbo pumps. About a minute before liftoff, you will hear the announcement that Falcon 9 is in startup, which means that the rocket's own internal flight computers are now autonomously controlling the launch countdown. This is a great shot of the fairing. And inside that fairing, again, are the 88 spacecraft uh, as part of the Transporter 2 mission. Weather remains green. The range is also standing by to support. And as a reminder, if we don't get the opportunity to launch today, we do have a backup opportunity tomorrow at the same time.
Stage two lock load is complete. And there was the call up for second stage locks loading complete. That is the last of propellant loading. Falcon 9 is now fully fueled and ready for liftoff in about a minute and 40 seconds. You can start to see some white clouds starting to form around Falcon 9. That is normal and expected for us at this stage in the countdown when the dense, when the dense cold liquid oxygen meets the warmer ambient air of Florida, it begins to condense and form the white clouds that you see on screen. Falcon is in startup. Falcon 9 is in startup. You can start to hear some of the cheers here in Hawthorne. Uh, the first and second stages are beginning to pressurize for launch. Falcon 9, transported to LD is go for launch. That was the launch director giving the final go for launch. We are T minus 30 seconds from liftoff. Let's tune into terminal count and watch as the Transporter 2 mission begins. T minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition. And lift off. Vehicles pitching downrange. Chamber pressure is nominal. We are T plus 42 seconds into flight. Falcon 9 has cleared its tower, and we're currently throttling uh, down throttling in preparation for max Q. That should be coming up in about 20 seconds. Max Q is where the vehicle will experience the highest amount of aerodynamic pressures. Falcon 9 is supersonic. Max Q. And you heard the call out. We've passed the period of maximum aerodynamic pressure. Falcon 9 is now headed south uh, along the Florida coast. All is looking good with the first stage trajectory. We have five events coming up in quick succession in about a minute. Uh, the first is main engine cutoff, also known as NICO, uh, followed by stage separation, where the two stages will separate from one another. Uh, the first stage will then perform a flip to head back towards Florida and uh, the, the MVAC engine on the second stage will uh, form second engine start one and ignite that MVAC engine. Then the first stage will also begin its first of three burns, the boost back burn. And this is a view from the top of uh, Falcon 9 looking down towards the nine Merlin engines at the bottom of the first stage. Stage separation confirmed. Uh, and there you uh, saw on screen, we had successful stage separation. The first stage started performing its flip maneuver. And the boost back burn uh, should be ending in about 25 seconds.
Stage one boost back shut down. And there was confirmation of a successful boost back burn. Again, that is the first of three burns for the first stage. Coming up next is fairing deploy in a few seconds here from the top of the second stage. Fairing separation confirmed. And off come the two fairing halves and they have separated and fallen away from the vehicle, exposing the 88 spacecraft to the vacuum of space. As a reminder, the recovery vessel, HOS Briarwood, will be attempting to recover the fairing halves today from the water. So we are about T plus four minutes and 20 seconds into flight. We have a couple of views on screen. On the right-hand side is a view of our second stage Merlin vacuum engine, also known as the MVAC engine. It's currently in the first of two MVAC burns. This burn should last for uh, until the T plus eight minute and 24 second mark. About another four minutes left on this burn. And uh, the next milestone will be for the first stage to perform its entry burn. That's what you're seeing on the left-hand side of your screen. Falcon 9 needs to execute an entry burn to slow itself down before hitting the dense parts of the atmosphere. And without this burn, relying on the atmosphere alone to slow Falcon 9 down would put unnecessary strain on the rocket. Vehicle is on a nominal trajectory. And the call out for a nominal trajectory. Everything's looking great so far on the Transporter 2 mission. You also notice some honeycomb-like structures have deployed uh, on the first stage on the left-hand side. Uh, that, that, those are our four hypersonic grid fins positioned at the base of the inner stage. They help to orient the rocket during re-entry by moving the center of pressure. Um, there's also some plumes of gas coming out. Uh, this is cold nitrogen gas, which helps with attitude control. Both are essential to make sure that we have a nice targeted landing back on landing zone one later on in today's mission. The second burn, the entry burn, is coming up in about 30 seconds. Watch for that on the left-hand side. Uh, you can also uh, see there's a speedometer of sorts uh, on the bottom left-hand side. That tracks the speed of the first stage. And when we begin the entry burn, we'll start to reduce the speed. And shortly after the entry burn ends, um, we'll hit the denser parts of the atmosphere and also begin to further reduce our velocity as the first stage continues to make its way back towards Earth. Stage two, FTS is saved. Stage one, entry burn start up. There's the call out, and you can see on screen three Merlin engines have relit and are currently slowing down the first stage. This burn is expected to last for another 15 seconds or so. Vehicle on a nominal trajectory. Stage one entry burn shut down. And successful completion of our second of three burns. As I mentioned earlier, we are going to be attempting to recover the booster for an eighth time back on land at landing zone one. The first stage, stage one has, has one more burn left, the landing burn. It, it begins just before we touch down and provides the booster with a soft descent before we land. At the same time Falcon lands, we are expecting sequel one of our second stage, that's second engine cutoff. Um, and shortly after that, we'll be entering a coast phase. And you can see stage the Florida entry, coast and landing zone one are approaching on the left-hand side of the screen as this booster makes its attempt to land for an eighth up. time. Oh, this is a great shot of the first stage coming down with its landing stage burn. Stage two, internal guidance. Stage one, London oh. Lake deployed. Uh, 
Uh, that was as smooth as I'd seen it. Uh, we had phenomenal shots all the way through the landing burn. You heard the sonic booms. This booster has landed for the eighth time. Uh, that is the 89th recovery of an orbital class rocket. Stage one nominal landing confirmed. And what a way to start nominal off the insertion. transporter two mission. Uh, at the same time, we did have successful second stage, uh, second engine cutoff and confirmation of a nominal orbital insertion. We are now going to coast for the next 45 minutes or so while we wait for second engine start two. Uh, just a few minutes after that, we'll begin to deploy the 88 spacecraft on board this mission. We will see you back here around the T plus 53 minute and 30, uh, 30 second mark. Expected loss of signal, cave.
Welcome back to the Transporter Two mission, to our second dedicated rideshare mission. Falcon 9 lifted off at 3.31 p.m. Eastern Time from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station and had successful stage separation. We landed our first stage on landing zone one and successfully completed our first second stage burn. We are waiting to relight our MVAC engine on the second stage for a second and a final burn. It's going to be a quick burn lasting about two seconds. And that should be coming up in about 15 seconds. MVAC engine chill underway. Nominal orbit insertion. So we did have successful uh, second engine start for the second time and uh, successful second engine cutoff. And you just heard the call for a nominal orbital insertion. So the second stage is going to coast for a few minutes before we start to uh, deploy our satellites. Um, and as I mentioned, this is our second dedicated rideshare mission. Our goal with these rideshare flights is to provide small satellite operators with, a, with competitive pricing, increased flight opportunities, and flexibility. These dedicated rideshare flights to sun-synchronous orbits will occur about three times a year, providing regular access to orbit. In addition, we also offer opportunities for ride to orbit on our Starlink missions, which launch every couple of weeks. We've launched four Starlink missions that include rideshare spacecrafts as well, um, and we're hoping to launch much more in the future. So coming up in about two minutes, uh, we are expecting the start of the deployment sequence. There will be 31 deployments for 88 spacecraft, which will occur over a 30-minute period of time. This includes CubeSats, microsats and orbital transfer vehicles, sometimes called space tugs, which will deploy their spacecraft after separating from Falcon 9, and also three Starlink satellites. Many of these deployments will be grouped within seconds of each other, while others may be a minute or more apart. Now, this is a look at the order of deployments between now and the final deployment around the T plus one hour and 27 minute mark. You should hear the call out from our mission operators as each deployment happens. And to keep in mind, most of these deployments include multiple satellites. So while there are 31 deployments, at the end, we will have put 88 satellites into orbit, again, including our three Starlink satellites. We are about a minute away. This is a view of our second stage. Oh. Uh, and back to the animation. Uh, several, of the, several of the customers on board this mission have multi-launch agreements with SpaceX. So some of the names might sound familiar to those of you who have tuned in for previous rideshare missions. It's also worth noting that uh, we will lose access to ground station coverage for a short period during the 30-minute window, 30-minute uh, 30 30 deployment sequence. Uh, when we reach that point, we'll let you know. And here's the view of the second stage MVAC engine. Uh, similar to the first transporter mission, we'll be flying a fuel dome payload tray, which is essentially a small platform mounted on the back end of the second stage fuel dome that will release a handful of payloads. And as you may have already noticed, one of our two MVAC views is obstructed uh, because of that fuel dome payload tray. Acquisition of signal, Bangalore. So we are expecting the first batch of deployments to uh, begin in a few seconds here. It's one, separation confirmed. News at 19, separation confirmed. First ISI satellite, separation confirmed.
Tropics Pathfinder, separation confirmed. Domes 2, separation confirmed. Second ISI satellite, separation confirmed. Tyvek 0211, separation confirmed. Yam 3, separation confirmed. Tubin, separation confirmed. Umbrasar, separation confirmed. Ion satellite carrier, separation confirmed. So we uh, saw a couple of satellites um, and we got confirmation for the NASA's PACE-1, Satellogic's NUSAT-19, the first ice eye satellite from an exoport, NASA's Tropics Pathfinder, Planet IQ's GNOMES-2, the second ice eye satellite from an exoport, Tyvac 0211, Loft Orbital's YAM 3 from an exoport, and TU Berlin's Tubin from an exoport, the Umbrar SAR, and Deorbit's Ion satellite carrier. We were expecting to hear the call out for Tyvac 0173, so we're going to check in with the teams and see if we can give you guys an update a little bit later. Coming up, we have another uh, batch of five. Uh, these are going to be for the Space Development Agency General Atomics Paratons Lynx 2, Satellogic's NUSAT 20 and 21, Capella SAR satellite, and the third Ice Eye satellite from an exoport. Links 2, separation confirmed. USAT 20, separation confirmed. USAT 21, separation confirmed. Capella SAR satellite, separation confirmed. Third ISI satellite, separation confirmed. So we got confirmation for... Expected loss of signal, Diego Garcia. We got uh, confirmation for five more deployments. That was the Space Development Agency General Atomics Paratons Lynx 2, Satellogic's NUSAT 20 and 21, the Capella SAR satellite and the third Ice Eye satellite from an exoport. Um, for those that are wondering, exoport is an adapter, uh, special adapter built by our ExoLaunch customer. We are about halfway through the 31 total deployments on today's mission. 
And coming up, we have two more deployments. These are going to be for the Space Development Agency General Atomics uh, Links 1, uh, as well as the DARPA Space Development Agency Air Force Research Laboratories Mandrake 2 cable. Links one, separation confirmed. Mandrake two, able, separation confirmed. Uh, we got confirmation for Space Development Agency General Atomics Paratons Links One deployment, as well as the DARPA Space Development Agency Air Force Research Laboratories Mandrake to Able. And coming up in less than a minute, we are expecting the next deployment. It's going to be the fourth Ice Eye satellite from an exo port. Fourth ISI satellite, separation confirmed. And that was confirmation of the fourth ISI satellite from an exo port. Uh, the next batch of deployments, there's going to be six of them. Uh, it is for Swarm's first and second Space B cluster from an exo port, Nano Avionics D2 Altacom 1 from an exo port, Spire's Lemmer number 1 from an exo port. Satellogic's NewSat-22 and LOF Orbital's GAM-2 satellite. First Space B cluster, separation confirmed. Second Space B cluster, separation confirmed. D2 Atlacom 1, separation confirmed. Lemur number one, separation confirmed. New set 22, separation confirmed. GAM-2, separation confirmed. And we got some really cool views of the satellites separating. Uh, that was for Swar Swarm's first and second Space B cluster from an exo port, Nano Avionics D2 Altacom 1 from an exo port, Spire's Lemur number 1 from an exo port, Satellogic's NewSat-22, and LOF Orbital's GAM-2 satellite.
The next two deployments are going to happen during a blackout period, which means that we lose camera views and telemetry. Uh, while we wait to regain access to ground station coverage in a few minutes, sit back and follow along with our animation that shows you where we're at in the mission. We'll see you back here at the T plus one hour and 15 minute mark. Expected loss of signal, Bangalore.
Welcome back to the webcast for Transporter 2, SpaceX's second dedicated SmallSat rideshare program mission. On board this mission are 88 spacecraft, including three Starlink satellites. We are currently waiting to hear callouts for, the, for two deployments, which occurred during a blackout period with no access to ground station coverage. So those two are Spire's lemur number two from an exoport and DARPA Space Development Agency Air Force Research Laboratory's Mandrake 2 Baker. Lemur number two and Mandrake two Baker separations confirmed. Acquisition of signals, fall barred. And there was the confirmation for Spire's Lemur number two from an exoport, the DARPA Space Development Agency Air Force Research Laboratory's Mandrake two Baker satellites. Uh, coming up, the next two deployments will happen a few minutes from now. Uh, those will be for Spaceflight Incorporated's Sherpa FX two and the LTE one satellites. And we're going to leave you with a short animation and uh, sit back and follow along. And we'll see you back here once we hear those callouts.
acquisition signal to Lee. Welcome back once again to the webcast for Transporter 2, SpaceX's second dedicated SmallSat rideshare program mission. Uh, we have two de uh, deployments coming up. These are going to be the last two for our rideshare customers. They are for Spaceflight Incorporated's Sherpa FX2 and L Sherpa LTE1. And that should be coming up uh, in about 20 seconds. Sherpa FX2 separation confirmed. Sherpa LTE1 separation confirmed. And you see on screen and heard the confirmation. Uh, we got confirmation of Spaceflight Incorporated's Sherpa FX2 and Sherpa LTE1, LTE1 deployment. Now these are the last of our rideshare deployments for today, but we're not done. We have three Starlink satellites to deploy as well. That's gonna be coming up in a few minutes here. So uh, sit back, we're gonna take a quick break and we'll see you back here at the T plus one hour and 27 minute mark.
and welcome back to the webcast for SpaceX's Transporter 2 mission. If you're just joining us, we are close to the end of today's mission, which launched this morning from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida at 3.31 p.m. Eastern Time. We then had two successful ignitions and shutdowns of the second stage Merlin vacuum engine, uh, then successful deployment of a majority of our spacecraft for our Ivanka commercial and uh, government customers. We were also able to successfully recover our first stage for an eighth time on our landing zone. We just had the confirmation of the TIVAC 0173 satellite. Um, so all uh, payloads so far are um, have been confirmed for deployment. We have three Starlink satellites to go, and we are expecting uh, confirmation of that deployment here shortly. Expected loss of signals, Walvard. Starling deploy confirmed. And there goes our three Starlink satellites. Again, that is 88 spacecraft confirmed for deployment on today's Transporter 2 mission. Uh, with that said, we will be bringing our webcast to an end. We would like to thank all of our rideshare customers for their support on today's mission. We would also like to thank the United States Air Force for range support, as well as the Federal Aviation Administration for licensing. Continue to follow us on SpaceX.com for future missions and milestones, as well as our Twitter and Instagram profiles. And if you are excited by what you've seen today and want to join our team, visit SpaceX.com slash careers to learn more about working at SpaceX. And as always, thank you to all of our viewers for your continued support and have a great rest of your day.